Welcome, folks. This is an important conversation we're having about um, the most vulnerable infants and toddlers. Um, it is a series we've been doing called Right from the Start NJ in New Jersey. But we weren't the first. There are some folks, uh, our great friends up in Vermont, who have been at this for a while, and I'm honored to introduce um, Allie Richards, who is the Chief Executive Officer of the Permanent Fund for Vermont's Children, and Rick Davis, President of the Permanent Fund for Vermont's Children. This is part of an ongoing conversation we've been having with you. Uh, we've worked together up in Vermont through the cooperation and the help of the Terrell Fund. Ali, let me ask you, you were talking about uh, do the brain thing again, 80 and 90 percent, zero to three, and then zero to five? Exactly. 80 percent of the architecture of your brain formed by age three, 90 percent by age five. Okay, so what are you finding in terms of quality child care progress you've made in Vermont? Because you said that's one of the keys to dealing with this. And why are there lessons for New Jersey, sure. for us and everyone else, and the nation? Absolutely. So what we're finding, let me paint you a picture of, of Vermont because sure. it's similar to the rest of the country. Seven out of 10 kids under six in Vermont have all available parents in the workforce. So this crucial, most crucial time in their development, where are they? They are not simply at home anymore. It's a change that we've seen in our society. And of that 70% of kids, only 50% have access to any regulated childcare. So here's the challenge. And 80% of our infants and toddlers, those that need it the most in Vermont, have no access to high quality childcare. We're not getting into affordability even with that, which is you could say none of it is affordable for a family. Mm. Families in Vermont pay upwards of 40% of their household 40. income. 40%. What's Much more than average? other needs. It's very similar. And 60, we, what we know is 61% of kids across the country have all available parents in the workforce, according to the census. So um, it's very similar to what we're seeing in Vermont to the rest of the country. But let me play devil's advocate here. There are some watching who say, wow, gee, that's terrible for these kids. But you know, my kid's good. I have great quality child care for my kid. Why is this an issue for all people in Vermont, all people in New Jersey, and frankly, everyone in this country to care about? Well, first of all, it's really important for every child to have a healthy environment in which to grow up. And so not all kids have that. And so, but it does benefit every kid. So if even you talk to uh, families who are staying home with their children, they still want those kids out there having opportunities to interact and have good social emotional development with other children. So it provides that environment for that. But I say it also is important for businesses and it's an economic imperative because what parents are doing when they can't afford childcare, they're having to cobble together whatever they can to find places for their children to be while they're working. And so productivity goes down. And we know that, for example, in the US, uh, for the study saying $4 billion a year was lost in productivity. 74% of women who voluntarily leave the workforce cite childcare as the reason they couldn't afford childcare. So it really is important for business uh, and being able to retain employees it's important for every family to be able to make sure that their kids are in a safe and healthy environment. And Ali, in this regard, advocacy mm -hmm. has been a big part of the Vermont Initiative. Advo exactly. Advocacy about, well, about we know yeah. what, but to whom and to what effect? Exactly. At the Permanent Fund, we basically tackle this narrow challenge, but it's still huge. We've, we've decided what's the most ambitious but achievable goal that we believe will have the greatest impact on the future of our state. Who's the target audience? Uh, everyone. Everyone. And state so, legislators. State legislature, branch. but we need to build a movement uh, to move all of our influencers and policymakers. So what we've done is basically tackle this on two fronts. And I think that's one of the key pieces just on strategy that can be replicated elsewhere. We're building a movement. At the same time, we're building the model. And so what does that mean? Let's Grow Kids is our movement. It's a public awareness advocacy kids. campaign. Right. Exactly. That's the name that's of That's the campaign. That's the campaign. Exactly. And we have over 20,000 Vermonters strong involved in some way. And remember, we're a small state with a small population. Sure. That's a big um, number. It's a big number. Uh, and we, what we're doing is social media, paid media, earned media. We're training up Vermonters to tell their own story about child care. They're, they are the front of this movement, and they're going to be the ones demanding change. Because as Rick said, you know, when we get this right, we all benefit. It is all of our children. We have to approach it in that way. So we need to be able to say we're going to change public policy and mm. increase public investment forever. At the same time, though, we're actually in the field on was, the ground. Uh, Vermont Birth to Five. Vermont Birth to Five. Right. And there, there are parallel sort of initiatives that work on the movement for this permanent change with public policy and, and public investment. At the same time, we're actually increasing the quality, the, the amount, 
and sort of the efficiency of childcare today on the ground. So give us some advice here in New Jersey. We've been here, at this for about a year. Here's or what so. I would do because, you know, Abe Lincoln said, uh, with public sentiment, nothing can fail, and without it, nothing can succeed. That's right. So you, we, you will not be successful, uh, or at least it's With right from the start, NJ. Absolutely, unless you have the public behind you. If you're after a certain policy, especially policy around funding, you've got to have, uh, you've got to have your citizens uh, behind you 100%. Well, hold on, I'm devil's advocate here. Mm -hmm. we, we're in the media. We're in yeah. public broadcasting. Yeah. We don't, quote, advocate. Yeah. But we have people who do advocate, Absolutely. and they're part of it, uh, advocates for children of New Jersey, so great organization, and that's, others. That's, so we, if we're sitting there going, do this, do that. No, you can go to our website and find out more. But that's such a good point, Steve. Go ahead. Because so you, you really, have public broadcasting well, involved as well up in we Vermont. We do. But I've, Allie and I aren't going to get this done for Vermont. The permanent fund's not going to get it done, but it's the, it's the Vermonters that are going to get it done. It's our champions out there. We call them our bright spots. So my advice to New Jersey is you recognize the value of your champions. And the, what, what you do is you identify who out there is really prepared to lead, and you support them, and mm. you promote them, and then you leverage the power of those champions. And then champions spread and build more champions. Both, it could be moms or grandparents, or it could be pediatricians or CEOs of businesses. And you want to support them, and they become your movement, and they lead the movement for you. You're facilitating. Mm. You're not you're not doing the work yourself. You're facilitating and, and uh, enhancing that movement. And by the way, it's a good way to describe it. By the way, if you go on our website that you'll see right now on the air, you'll see a series of interviews. We just interviewed the president of the state senate, Steve Sweeney, on this for the second time on these issues. We had the chair of the Senate Health Committee, uh, Joe Vitale. We had um, the lieutenant governor. We'll have the governor, Governor Murphy, on talking about this. We talked about it during the campaign with him and his Republican opponent. When we have the governor back, we'll talk about that and a whole range of other people in the legislature, but that's only a piece of it, right, Ali? Mm -hmm. Absolutely, you need the movement to move policymakers. But as Rick said, you know, CEOs are a part of this, the business community is part of this. This could be the single greatest workforce development issue we've ever seen, <laughs> you know. I Everyone's mean, affected. Everyone, and so we need everyone to play a role in that. And in Vermont, we're starting to see CEOs step up and say, I see that how this affects my bottom line, and I need to be part of the solution. Oh, I also now. saw the governor. When we had that mm -hmm. conference up in Vermont, mm -hmm. Uh, last summer. Uh, Governor Scott. Not, not last summer, just only a few months ago. Yeah. yeah. Governor Scott actually was there. Yeah. Spoke. That's yeah. impressive. That, you know, we're a tiny state, Steve, 650,000 people. And so Governor Scott, when he first started running for governor, we met with him. And uh, he, he really didn't have a clue about child care. And so at the end of the campaign, just before the election, he came into our office with Ali and the team and he wanted to know all he could learn about child care. And he said, you know what? Every place I've gone on the campaign trail, everybody's saying we need to do something about high quality, affordable child care. Mm. We can't find it. He heard it, heard it from business people and moms and everything. So that was part of the Let's Grow Kids campaign, by the way, that got people at every single one of those campaign events. But in any case, he put it in his inaugural address and his budget address, and he's still with us on this. And Changing so le policy. leadership matters. It, it, leadership makes a difference. Well, the permanent fund uh, for Vermont's children, helping all of us understand how to have the impact that we all want to have for not just our children by right. blood, right. Um, but the children that we're responsible for. It is everyone's issue. And I, the promise that we'll make at the Caucus Educational Corporation is we'll continue to collaborate with you. I look forward to the we next conference Way again up in Vermont. I'll be there. Um, we'll be videotaping, filming as well for yeah. more broadcast. And, and thank you for teaching us, particularly those who are part of the Right from the Start NJ movement. Thank you so much. Great, Steve. Appreciate you coming all the way down from Vermont. Yeah. Pleasure to be Appreciate here. Okay. Yeah. Stay with us. Sure. We'll be right back right after this. The preceding program has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating over 25 years of broadcast excellence. Funding for this edition of Caucus New Jersey has been provided by the Turrell Fund, supporting right from the start NJ, the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation, the New Jersey Education Association, NJIT, Holy Name Medical Center in Teaneck, New Jersey, the North Ward Center, and by New Jersey Resources. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area. Caucus New Jersey has been produced in partnership with TriStar Studios.